Aloha and Tashi Delay from Kauai Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center. <laughs> Here on the island of Kauai in Hawaii, we present this class every Thursday night, six to eight o'clock Hawaiian time, and recorded on our website, kauaidharma.org. I'm Lama Tashi. When we present these classes, it's to encourage people to actually do the practices of the Dharma, training of the mind in its own wisdom nature. And that wisdom nature is innate in every being, even animals and spirits. But only in the human condition can it be developed. So we're all growing and developing, and we're all equal, but we all have different tendencies. So when we present this class, we present it in different modes of practice, and most of the practice is meditation. Why is in Bodhisattva training the meditation so important? Is because <clears throat> By focusing and using one's imagination with the symbols of the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, one is able to more and more attain a state of presence. And, and the presence is where the action is. And I say that because if you understand that everything you say, think, and do immediately goes into the path, well, that's history. It's, it's it's gone. And if you're always planning for the future, like people do in religious traditions, it hasn't happened yet. So the most powerful place to be is, as my good friend on Maui used to say, Ramdas, be here now. This state of presence is what these yogas and meditation practices help one to do. And then in that state of presence, there's a state of clarity. We, we use the word wisdom or insight. But this state of clarity is all knowing. And, th and that's one of the frailties of the human race today is, is they don't know their true nature. They don't know they have that. And they, because of that, they become more and more distracted, deluded. And that's not healthy. So if somebody asks you what kind of tradition you follow, you can say, well, you follow the health program of the Tibetan. Because that, that's really what it's all about. Good health. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And, and of course, in these times, economically. So, Tonight, I'm going to start the class by answering a question about this ritual instrument. It's called a katavanga. And it's actually a knife that was used in this shape to deal with corpses or dealing with the laying of animals for me. But every part of this is a symbol. And this, this point here is the point of compassion, which is the main point of the Tibetan Buddhist practice, that everything is based on loving kindness and concern for the well-being of others and our environment. The blade is cutting through ignorance or dualistic fixation 
the idea of the self being separate from, from everyone and everything. The handle, this part of it, this is called the Vajra handle, is the five elements and five wisdoms of the energy fields we use in Tibetan Buddhism to move very fast towards knowingness, towards liberation of who we really are, not the story we been conditioned to think we are or what we are telling ourselves. I'm, I'm explaining this because one of the practices we're going to do tonight is Vajra Sapa, Vajra Yogini practice. And she holds this hook knife behind the head with the skull cup. Well, the skull cup symbols the wisdom nature, which is actually the upper half of the human skull used as a bowl. Now, these were actually used in India in tantric practice ceremonies and by monks and nuns in monastic situations and yogis and yoginis in, in, in traditions where they were, they removed themselves from social endeavor and just did these practices. Now, another function of Tibetan Buddhism, which comes later in the development of one doing these practices, as I mentioned before, is the wisdom nature rising, which is the name of this book. And this is by Lama Sotram Ayoni. And I'm reading it because she's one of our teachers. And she's a Dakini. Now, this word Dakini applies, of course, to the, to the female, the women of the planet, actually. And it also applies to heavenly beings. It also applies to certain political figures and spiritual leaders, like Lama Sutra, Alioni. But the term Lama in Tibetan is honorable mother, which indicates the Lama, man or woman, as the Dakini energy. But in this book, on one, one of her excerpts, she is, she shows a picture of the Kat Katavanga, this tantric, ritual at night. And she gives a little explanation that goes like this. The end of the blade is called the hook of compassion. It's the hook that pulls sentient beings out of this ocean of suffering. The blade itself cuts, cuts through self-clinging, ego cherishing, and the dualistic split into the, developing into what is called great bliss. The cutting edge is the dice representing the, the cutting quality of wisdom itself, the wisdom that cuts through self-deception. She says, to me, it's the most powerful symbol of the wise feminine entity. And I find that often women tend to hang on to too long and not to cut through what needs to be cut through. And this is the theme of this book based on her own um, wisdom development in India, Tibet, Scotland, Canada, United States. And now she's in Dharma Center in California and Colorado. But I highly recommend this. Understanding the Dakini principle makes life a lot easier for Dharma practitioners as they develop the practice. The Dakinis are the activity of the Buddha energy field. And to give you an example, I'm a gardener. 
And I've been using this Dakini Wisdom Energy to help me in my gardening. Well, 45 years, maybe 50 years. And the insight and the energy that are involved in gardening and farming are the spirit energy of the life force of the plants and the mineral life and the insect life and the animals, all of that. And it made my job a lot easier because gardening and farming is, is certain times hard work. The results are off the charts. But I'm just putting it into perspective, no matter what you do. But when it comes to Dharma programs, like establishing a Dharma center or building a stupa or setting up a retreat or whatever, bringing teachers to your, to your homeland, the Dakini energy is the one that makes it easy. And I, and I know that because that's what's happened here in Hawaii, on all the islands. We have Dharma centers on all the islands. We have teachers from all the various Buddhist country, Himalayan countries in Tibet, in each center. And the Dharma is flourishing. So understanding this symbol, along with many other symbols of Tibetan Buddhism, including the mantras, which are symbols themselves, the sea symbols, and the, and the practice of the deities and the five elements and all the color codes, it's all symbolic. And this has been around forever, thousands and thousands of years. There was a book written by Carl Jung, Man and His Symbols. Puts it all in perspective. But in Tibetan Buddhism, it puts it into action. And that's where we find side. So, we start with the altruistic motivation. This, if you have this page, it's at the top. That everything we're doing is for everybody else. And of course, for our mother, our environment. Which is stress to the max right now, along with that. In order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and limitless sentient beings, our mothers, we now all together take refuge and offer prostrations and other spiritual practices. Then we do the refuge to go with that altruistic motivation, which is unique in Tibetan Buddhism tradition. We go for refuge to all the glorious holy mountains. We go for refuge to all the items and symbols of the deities gathered in our mandala. We go for refuge to all this supreme dharma. We go for refuge to all the Buddhas, those who have conquered their mind and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all the noble songs. And we go for refuge to all the dakas and dakinis who are the protectors and defenders of dharma. All of these possessing the eye of transcending awareness. And I'm going to chant those prayers, two prayers in Tibetan. No dong go wall, no ke ta dong, yon pe sem chan, tan se, tu di ne zhun te ji si jan chu ne po, la ji ki bardu. That was the altruistic motivation. Now, the six refuges of the refuge prayer. Dal den mama dampa nam la chak su chiyo 
Then we enter the Bodhisattva training program by the prayer of Bodhicitta. Now, Bodhicitta is Bodhisattva awareness or Bodhisattva mind, mind training. And it's twofold the Bodhicitta of compassion for all sentient beings, none left out, and the Bodhicitta of the actual practice of understanding your true nature as like space, like the energy of the universe itself, infinite space filled with infinite life, no, no boundary. To the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, we go for refuge. And to this supreme assembly of the refuge, the three jewels and the three roots and all the symbols. May I, through the practice gained by using the six perfections, the six bodhisattva disciplines in my life, accomplish Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. And the word sentient beings includes all the humans, all the animals, and all the spirits in the entire universe, wherever they are. And because we do it that way, and that's the theme of all our practice, that fulfill, fulfills the motivation that each and every one is our mother or our children or our lover, friend, relative, pet, adversary, enemy, whatever. There are responsibilities. There are life support and have been for innumerable aeons. Lifetime. If you get that, if you get that, if you understand that, you're moving out of the constricted drama mindset which is prevalent, everybody has it, into a healthier understanding of who and what you are and what to do with that. You, you become what is really lacking on the planet today, socially, from top to bottom, socially, religions, political organization, family life, business, everything. is intelligence. And we're so confused that our intelligence isn't there. 
and by meaning intelligence. People confuse that with smart, being smart. You know, some of the smartest people in the world are the least intelligent. And they're running the show. They're the leaders. They're the religious leaders. They're the political leaders. They're the business leaders. They're the military leaders. They're the family leaders. That's not appropriate. So we practice. The symbol of highest intelligence is this symbol, boom. Why? Because wrapped in this symbol is all the healing energy available to one or all people through these practices. And for instance, this household here where we live in a neighborhood on a small island in a small town. It's called Kwai Healing Center. And it is, you know, and people were flocking here from all over to get a taste. And we can't do it in our how in our house, in our temple anymore, because of the prevalence of viruses and other diseases, molds and bacteria and all that. And it's flooding in here, right? Thousands and thousands of people every day, night and day. It's a red zone. Huh? They call it a red zone. Yeah, they call this Hawaii specifically our island, a red zone. Of course, each island is a red zone because of the number of visitors coming to those islands. The worst is Honolulu. This is the least. We have the lowest number of deaths and the lowest number of sick people per capita of Hawaii. But we don't want to let, we don't want to let that out. <laughs> but it's 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 part of our system. We have the Aloha Spirit, which was the program of the Hawaii and how they survive in a nice way. with their teachers and lifestyle and survival out here in the middle of the ocean without support from anywhere else. But the theme was aloha, which means interest in the well-beings of every individual and every animal and every plant and in the surrounding ocean. And sharing and kindness. And that's who Tibetan Buddhism evolved in Tibet on just that theme. They didn't call it Aloha, they called it Dharma. Dhar, wisdom, mom, mother, the healing energy of the way things are, they, they use the term as it is. And so with these practices and this kind of symbology, as it is, is how we are developing in, to just that. And it's endless. There's no goal, it's not like a religion. It's a healing energy program with no ceiling, no boundaries. Everything goes, including your emotional program. Oh, 
So let's meditate. Sit with your back straight, hands in a comfortable position, either in your lap or on your knees. <coughs> Head slightly tilted forward, mouth open if you have to. Close if you can, breathe through your nose. Eyes, relax them to the half closed position and allow your gaze to rest to the space and light, two feet in front, not too close and not on an object. And when you have these positions in place, then bring your focus, we call awareness, to your breath. All healing traditions, even most martial arts, martial arts programs, Start with this, the breath, that which keeps us alive. No breath, next slide. And to put your consciousness on your breath is a very powerful healing technique. And as you inhale, use your imagination to think that the earth, water, fire, air, and space that your mother made you out of is in the air, which it is. Those five elements, and you are breathing them into you, into your lungs. So visualize that energy program support as white light filling your lungs. Just this part of your form. Immediately, spontaneously, the absorption breath takes place, allowing all of that energy to pervade every cell in your body as it takes place in a flash through your whole body, visualize red light through your form, even through your hair. Then combine these two codes, the red and the white, and exhale blue light out your nose as a powerful healing breath to, into space. Think of it like into the sky, it goes everywhere to everybody, available. That's all we're doing as human beings. We're developing and evolving into higher states of awareness and good health. It's making ourselves available. So now we're making our energy through our breath available for healing. Inhale white light, fill your lungs. The absorption breath, red light flashing through your body. Combine these two lights and exhale blue light out to space, like the sky. Simple. Keeping this three light breathing practice in mind, count 21 breaths. Inhale white, absorption red, exhale blue. One, white, red, blue. Two, 21 times.
When you reach the 21 count, combine the three, take your focus off your breath, combine the three colors of light into one tiny particle of light and center it in your heart chakra in the middle of your chest, in the center of your body, in the central channel of your life force. The moment you do that, that light blends with the infinite light of boundless space. It becomes one huge blank of energy. And relax in that. No meditation. This is the mother energy we call the all ground of everything, all of samsara and all of nirvana. Everything you think, everything that appears. This is the energy. Relax, be present, and ponder it. Contemplate space. And by doing this, this becomes the foot of meditation, the foundation. Then bring your imagination into the program and by again imagining that particle in your heart center. Creating a chakra, an energy modality. It's called a bindu or a tigli, Sanskrit, Tibetan. And imagine that tiny point of light to expand into a very small sphere of clear light. The nature of our three dimensional universe. In keeping an imagine and focus together, imagine that to become one of the five elements that you choose for the five element healing practice. So this three lights meditation is the support for the five elements healing. Tonight we're going to use the symbol of the cube, a yellow cube. Earth. Label it Earth and see this yellow cube about the size of your thumbnail in your heart shock. Then visualize it to move out in front and up before your eyes, two feet in front. And blend with the space of that place. Then imagine it to grow in size so you can comfortably see your body sitting inside of it. Beyond the reach of your arms. The six-sided yellow cube labeled Earth. That's what we're all standing on, sitting on, laying on.
then share this healing energy with the environment of the world around you by thinking it expands its eye to completely enclose an area 50 miles in diameter. Either in a circular or spherical dimension. Here we imagine the island of Kauai, mountains, ocean, everything inside. Next step is to expand it in size to completely enclose Mother Earth, including her atmosphere of air. Then visualize it to grow in size to completely enclose our solar system, which is billions of miles in every direction. Then expand it to completely enclose our spiral disk shaped galaxy. Our telescope shows us what that looks like. Inside the six-sided cube of light navel Earth. Then move beyond the confines of your ordinary mind and think this symbol merges with the infinite light of boundless space. Relax and be present and again simply contemplate the mother element of space. Which is infinite. Then again, bring your awareness to the meditating on the six sided cube and closing the galaxy. Shrink it to just enclosing the solar system. Smaller and smaller to just enclose Mother Earth. Then to just a small area of your city, town, island, or 50 mile diameter of where you are doing this practice. Then confine it to just enclose your physical body. All that life force, healing energy, psychically projected with the six sided cube enclosing your physical form just as you are. Then shrink the earth symbol to just a small, 
small thumbnail sized cube in front of your lot in front of your eye. Drop it to chest level and into your heart chakra. Shrink it to a tiny point of light and allow that to blend with the infinite light of space and relax, no meditation. Be present and enjoy space, enjoy in bliss. Bring this developing state of awareness to in front of your eyes and spread it into your place of practice. And in Bodhisattva Training School, we dedicate the results of this to the benefit of all beings everywhere. The simplicity of this practice makes it available to any age of human, children, adults, elderly people, business organizations, and it is being zoomed to many websites all over the planet. And it works. And it allows people to understand not only their own ability to heal themselves, <laughs> but also to stay present. It's okay to be nothing. Like space. Earth, water, fire, air, space. When you come into the world, you come from space. The mother gives you space to be in her body. Then feeds you the earth, the water, the fire, and the air. That's it. And when you leave this body, they reverse. You can't eat. That's the earth. When you can't drink water anymore, then the earth is disappearing into the water. When your heat is uncontrollable in your body, then it's disappearing into the fire. When the fire disappears and you, when you can't breathe, that's the air. When the air can't, it's gone, you're in space. Relax, you're back. With the mother. What's the difference? One breath. And keep that in mind. It adds a lot of spice to every moment of your life. 
from now until it actually takes place, which it will. Good. And if you know this elemental practice, as this leaving process starts to take place, you can be mindful of it. It's the Dakini energy. Each one of those elements is the, is the support system of everything that exists. And the power is unrestricted, un, unlimited. And it's a hard thing to get used to this idea of infinite. No beginning, no met, and no middle. No perceiver, no appearance. Nothing to add or take away. It's okay, just as it is now. Ooh. All of what we do is simplified down to just that. It's too close, it's too simple, it's too profound, it's too perfect, and it's too trashy. But it's your true nature. When we use the symbol of the stupa, it's the five elements earth, water, fire, air, space, and the little flame at the top is your awareness pointing to the sky. But the stupa is just energy. Inside, packed with energy like a nuclear reactor. Otherworldly appearance. You don't see these in the traffic. You don't find them out in the woods unless you go to Rocky Mountain National Park, in Colorado. It's 108 foot high. locked into solid granite, 60 foot pillars down into the ground. Just like that. But these five elements of mother principle is the mother of perfect wisdom at the same time and her energy fields are five folds blend with the five elements. Earth is the Ratna principle of equality. We're all standing on the same mother earth. We grow our food with the earth. Our bodies, bones are earth. Then this is many stages of development because as you come into it, the water element becomes the wisdom energy of unity and flexibility. Earth can be steam. I mean, water can be steam. It can be a waterfall. It can be the ocean. It can be ice and so forth. The fire energy is the development of your awareness out of the drama field with the earth water body support system of your mind in stages, these are discs that they're golden color. And it's the activity, the movement of the earth and water. And finally you get to the air, which is the life support of animals, humans and beings in the ocean. And space is infinite. It has infinite planets, infinite solar systems, infinite galaxies, infinite atoms, and infinite potential. It comes out of the sky, it goes back to the sky, everything. 
That makes it easy to understand. You know, understanding is important. I mean, you can't get your mind around infinite, but you can get your mind around the mother support system like a mother for your only child. That's the heart energy of life itself for us humans and animals. Not so much in the spirit world. And when we activate this through these practices, you've lit a forest fire. Warning, small print. <laughs> Once it's lit, going, going, it starts to spread. To where? To where? To wherever it should be, wherever it's appropriate, wherever it's a benefit. It's, it's here in Hawaii, it's aloha. In Tibet, it was Dharma. But that's a good thing because. You can relax. And this state of relaxed awareness is where your breath takes you. When you count 21 breaths, by the time you get to 21, you started to settle. And if you're at all alert, you notice that you're more peaceful, quiet, tranquil. You don't have to smoke a doobie. You don't have to drink, take a shot of whiskey. You don't have to do anything. Just do that. And from that, the wisdom nature, with the guidance of a man or woman that knows what's going on, starts to evolve. It's called awareness. And once this evolutionary process of evolving means to move out of the constricted samsara drama world into space, into a place in your mind and in your be state of being that it, that's not happening. And, and you learn to be okay with that. You know, you don't have to run off to the movies, grab your cell phone, get the TV, use a computer, drive to nowhere in particular, just to be driving, shopping, all the weird things that we do that are just useless. And once you've started to move into this and become more and more alert, and your physical being starts to loosen up, you know, it's like Tai Chi. You start to flow with the energy of the day and the energy of the night and the energy of the world around you. So then we introduced what the tribes of the planet have been introducing for a thousand of years, symbols. And the best symbol is the human symbol. Man and woman in sexual union. Ooh. Well, the children will learn later. But what is the union of the sexes is the meeting of the, the feminine powerful, insightful, 
which means intuitive energy of your consciousness. With the masculine methods of how to use that to be okay to trust it. You know? So we're going to do Vajrasapha practice. It shows the two, two deities, Vajrasapha, which is Tara, and the male aspect was which is Chen Rei Z, but I have to say, I have to comment on it. In sexual union, they show the woman much smaller than the man. And we know that's not the way it is. <laughs> Actually, think about it. In any case, the symbology is they're both the same color code in this in this tonka. And the Vajrasapa practice is on the back of the tonka with the om ah and om, marking the three places. It's the energy field of space into your own energy field of healing. With the sun and the moon in the sky in a natural setting and the empty mirror of your wisdom mind being the Buddha nature of the blue light surrounding your brain. He is holding the Vajra and bell behind your back. Like this. And she is holding the knife and skull cup behind his back. And I want to tell you, that symbolizes wrathfulness, power. This symbolizes wisdom, the bell and orgy. And she's taking those two with the Vajra handle and offering it. He's taking his two and offering it. And they're sitting in full lotus position in this. And on a lotus sun and moon, it means it's only applied in the human condition. That's what the lotus sun and moon see symbolizes. Taking birth of light in the human condition, not out of desire like all the rest of it. And there are thousands of human beings on the planet today that have come into the world that, just that way. And there are thousands of Moors that have developed after they came out of the womb to this position of compassion, power, and insight. Using their body, speech, and mind together so they can be okay. So I've explained the deity, but at the bottom of the deity in this tanka is a little empty mirror. And that's the symbol of the Buddha above their head, which is the Buddha over my right shoulder, Aksobaya. With the right hand on the right knee and left hand in the lap. Here. And that's the energy of the Lama. It's called mirror-like wisdom, but what it simply means is there's no such thing as separation between anything, between any particle or entity in the entire universe. There's no separation between anything you think as being separate. That doesn't exist. That's defective thinking, the idea of separation. It leads to war. Mirror-like wisdom means your mind is like a mirror. It's taking it all in, but it's remaining empty. It's not identified. I, I 
identify it by chewing on it, identifying it. Mm -hmm. By doing that. And that energy is the one of five symbols of enlightened awareness that we activate with these practices. Then we sound the mantra with our speech. So we're imagining the symbol and the deity as the same thing, but the symbol is about universal healing, infinite healing applied to every being, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. No limit. Always available, always increasing. No matter where human life takes place, animal life takes place, spirit life takes place. And then you have the mantra of the vibration of your breath making a sound here. And this vocal energy point has actually there's two two levels of sound in the, this box, Adam's out, whatever you want to call it. And some of the Tibetans have learned to activate both at the same time and for instance, Karmapa was chanting yesterday doing that, the last day of Sakadawa. But when we sound this mantra, the hum becomes the honorific representation of the mind of the Lama's voice as what you are sounding. And it means, excellent Dorje Sempa and Vajra Yogini. Vajra Sakra, I pray that you remove and purify all my harmful former deeds, obstructions, conflicting emotions, delusions, transgressions, and all negative and harmful energy and activity. And also that of all sentient beings filling space and the six migrating realms of emotional rebirth. That's what this prayer means. And in Sanskrit, we, we say that prayer. You can say it in English while you're visualizing yourself as the deity, because we're gonna do, you're going to be empowered to be the deity and the consort this, this way. And your speech is part of the program. And the home is in your heart center as a, what we're doing with it. Infinite application. It's an app. It's called a creation symbol. It's the vibration of what we're doing. Everything that we're doing. Sounds like this. Om Varja Sapta Samaya. Om Varja Yogini. Vajrasattva, Samaya. So you can do either just Vajrasattva, which is the way the monks and nuns do it, or you can do it in union, Vajrayogini, the mothers of the element. Om Vajrayogini, Vajrasattva, Samaya, Manopalaya. Vajrasapadenopa, <laughs> Ah. This is a tonka. We have tonkas on the walls behind Tara and Chenrezi and Aksabaya Buddha behind me. And usually we have these big for the class. But this is how we presented it to our Dharma centers 
printed on this plastic with the prayers on the back and how to do it. And Om Ah Hum Chong Ri, Ram Lam Bam Yam Mom, all of that. And the mantra, it says, when you do this practice, the home is the symbol of the five Buddha families, the five energy fields of infinite okayness. Hey is the sound of all your hindrances being removed. Do this 108 times in each session. And over time, complete 111,111 recitations of you being this deity, purifying yourself according to the instructions of the Lama, saying this mantra. And at the end of each session, saying the short mantra of both deities the same number of times. Then dissolving all of that into the home in your heart center and the home into space and sitting in voidness. Now, this is the second practice of the noon drill. Doing prostrations with the refuge prayer is the first. And we actually have a text of the Vajrasattva. I have this one, it's not covered. And it explains step by step how to set this up. And that the Om Ahun is your body, speech, and mind. And that's when you receive the empowerment, which I'll give in a moment. And I already read you the purpose of completely purifying And all of those sounds of the mantra, this is what they sound like in English. You as Vajrasattva, are the essence of my true nature. And by bringing my body, speech, and mind together with the symbol of the deity of being like a rainbow, like an illusion, helps me to purify the illusion of the world around me. And the Om An Hum brings my body, speech, and mind into union of the healing energy of it. When you see the smiling Vajrasattva and the smiling Vajrayogini as your true nature, the body, speech, and mind of all of the people that do this practice and have for 2,600 years since the time of Shakyamuni Buddha become your energy program, your support. And the three sounds of Om, Ah, and Hum connect to your breathing. So sit with your back straight and receive the empowerment. <clears throat> By inhaling white light and visualizing that energy filling your lungs with the sound OM. Then the energy support of all the five elements turning into the five world of wisdom passing through your body become the sound of energy itself, ah. And then those two vibrations of the om and ah and the codes of the white and the red blend into your exhale of blue light, dark blue light going out to every being in space with the sound boom. Now, when you do this immediately, the Lama appears in front and from the three places, the Lama's 
head white light comes into your head as the own energy of being the deity, the awe becomes the red light from the Lama's throat into your throat, the mantra vibrations, the seed syllable. And then the blue light from the Lama's heart is the moon coming into your heart. So you're receiving the empowerment of Om, Ah, and Hum, body, speech, and mind of the Lama's nature into you. The fourth empowerment is the Lama, he or she melts into light and you become either just Vajrasapa or if you wish, Vajrasapa in union with the elemental Bakini. Then the Om, Ah, and Hum come together in the heart chakra. And light fills your body by that Hum being the attraction of all of the energy of all the five Buddha families and all of the people doing this practice. Everywhere into you, your support. And this causes the heart mantra to, to you to project you as the deity to every being in the universe equal to you. Vajrasapha, Vajrayogini. That causes the hundred syllable mantra to appear in your heart chakra, coiled like a spring around the home inside a five color sphere of light. And when you say it, it fills the deities with light. It fills you with light. And the light of the deities move to the energy above your head in the place of the Buddha, Aksabaya. And from their place of union, they fill with light and that light comes into the top of your head at the Uma channel. It fills your whole body with light, pushing out all the negative stuff you've been putting there from beginning of this lifetime up to now. And it comes out through your orifices and your pores as like sludge, insects, whatever you want to think, and then sluices off of you down into the earth and becomes nectar for the spirits and animals that food that live in the earth, the actual earth. It's not wasted, recycled. Om Vajra Sattva, Vajra Yogini Samaya Manutalaya, Vajra Sattva, Venopa, Dita Jido Mebhava, Sutta Kaya Mebhava, Sukokayo may bawa, Anuraka may bawa, Sawa Zidhi Namjayati, Sawa Karma Sutsame, Sitsam Shri Kuru Hom, Aha Aha Hari, Bhagavan, Sawa Tata Gata, Raja Mami Musa, Raja Dhamma, Maha Samaya Sapa Ah, Om Raja Gini, Raja Sapa Samaya, Anuraka Raja Sapa Dhanuka, Sutta Jedo Mebhava, Sutta Kaya Mebhava, Sutta Kaya Mebhava, Anuruddha Mebhava, Sama Siddhi Mantrayasa, Sama Karma Sutta Men, Sutta Shriyam Kuru, Sama Hama Bhagava, Sama Tata Kata Vajra Mami Nusa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sapa Ah. Now, you don't have to project. You just know that this is the same as what you did with the Tara practice and the Chen Rezi practice. Every being is doing what you're doing. Just think that. But you're accessing the energy of mirror-like wisdom as the nature of your awareness. As infinite healing energy available to purify all of the crud you've placed in emotionally 
and physically, this life and all your previous lives up to now, out. And what happens when you do this backward is you open up the 84,000 nadis of psychic energy inherent in your actual physical body. But your physical body is now a body of light. It doesn't exist. It's an apparition. It's just a symbol. And you maintain that the whole time you sound the mantra and see the sea symbol blasting through you and all this coming out and down into the earth. From where? From the sky of your mind as the ultimate male and female energy of your awareness activated as your guru. Coming down into you in stages, head chakra, third chakra, heart chakra, power chakra, navel chakra, sex chakra, out through your pores, out. Eyes, nose, ears, mouth, lower orifices, out. Om Vajrayogin, Vajrayasatva, Samaya, Mamukavaya.
Now we do the invocation of the ten homes to bring more power into the practice. And this transmission comes from the lamas to increase the energy of this practice. So we say the hong sound 10 times. You can do this at the start of the practice or anytime you need the support of infinite healing with the sound hong. The first three are for your body, speech, and mind. Oh, oh, oh. Then four to bring the body, speech, and mind together in the practice. Oh, 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 oh. And the final three is the connection of the Dharmakaya. This energy field is a Buddha trading ground. The Sambhogakaya is the energy of Vajrasapa, Vajravini, and all the 1,000 deities the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. And the third home is for your body in action as the deities, whatever. The rainbow body of illusory awareness. Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Yamanakai. Oh, oh, oh. Now say all ten together. Oh, oh, oh. Pause. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Pause. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Then proceed with the practice. Om Vajrayogini Vajrasattva Samaya Mano Bhavaya Vajrasattva Dhenopa Dikta Jira Me Bhava Sudha Gaya Me Bhava Supo Gaya Me Bhava Panarato Me Bhava Sava Siddhi Vente Yasa Sava Kama Susana Sita Jaya Guru Hora Sava Tata Gata Vajima Me Vajima Vajima Mahasamaya Sapa 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 Sapa
now whisper it. If you have a mala, blow that into your mala. If you had a sick person close by, blow it, your breath to the sick person, you're sick or your pets. Whenever you say mantra like this, any kind of mantra, whether you sound it, whisper it, or no sound at all, just imagine it, and you can blow the breath the energy of your heart into that being. Mama Rinchen used to do that when I bring in like a dead bird or animal. And he'd also spit on them using the water of his connection, strong connection to that sentient being to be a student in a future life. Om Bhajyogini Vajrasava Samaya Maya Bhavaya Vajrasava Dino Bhava Dino Dino Meva Upagaya Mevava Supagaya Mevava Sarvajini Mantra Yasa Sarvakama Susame Sisamriya Bhava 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 Now, for beginners, you have to read this until you get it. It took me, I don't know, thousands of times. <laughs> But finally, it started to click in. And then after a while, as I got it going, then I could 
have the light of the deities above my head, I could have this all blue, and then this all green, and then this all white, and then this all red, and this all gold, whatever. Change the energy, and then all blasting out through the pores. Finally, I start to get that and through the orifice, out my mouth, out my ears, or then it all going into the ground, becoming nectar and food for the nagas and animals living in the earth. So slowly, slowly, and after 111,000 times a year and a half later, it finally started to roll. And it all came together. And it was nice. <laughs> They're nice, the deities are nice. And if you want to say it fast, you can say it like this. Use the mala to keep count. 108 times of the mala, you only count 100. The other eight are for the five Diana Buddhas and the other last three are for your body, speech and mind to develop path. But only 100 are the deity count. Oh, Roger Giddy, Roger Sapa Samaya, Mana Palaya, Roger Sapa Dinava, take the people make a law, suit of her and make a law. Honor her and make a law, so is it in a veil, so her comes to the maze and the beer and the boom. Oh, 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 Sutu kaya me bawa, supu kaya me bawa, anapati me bawa, so sedi me bawa, so kami sutu me sa su chiru, so jata kata baju mami wasa baju mami wasa mami wasa baju 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 and whisper all If you, now you do that when you're in a place where you can't make, be making noise that you're other people around you, sleeping or whatever. And then finally you can do it, no sound of the voice, no whisper, like this. Totally imagining the vibration of the mantra and the deity and the movement of the energy through your body and all the crud coming out down into the earth. And every once in a while thinking all oh, mother sentient beings doing the same thing you are. No matter how you say it with your imagination or with your whisper voice or your actual voice, keep track. It says that in the small print at the bottom of the tap. Six months I was doing this practice and Lama Rinchen comes along and says, remember I told you to count the prostration, now you got to count Vajrasapa. Keep track, write it in a little diary, book, something. Every day, 100, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. 2,000 is about 10 hours of recitation. 300 an hour. That's really moving right along. 
Ding. That's what you do in chat. That little clock. Ding. He's shagging his arm. So by clock or by count with a mala, however you do it. Insight develops automatically. Compassion for all sentient beings. You think all sentient beings purifying along with you. All mother beings, all children beings. However you want to think of it. Infinite in number, everywhere. All the animals, all the humans, all the spirits. No one left out. Come to be the Buddha energy above their head, Aksobhaya Buddha, mirror-like wisdom. No separation. You're in the universe like this, or like this. Take your pen. Then at the end of the session of the long mantra, the two deities above your head, or one if you just use Vajrasabha, come down into you. You become them physically, but actually with the rainbow body. So they come into this body. It's your rainbow body, just gone, doesn't exist. It never did. It's just borrowed energy. Then you do the short mantra, connecting the sea syllables, or connecting the Vajra and the bell, or connecting the Katavaka, the cutting knife and the skull cup, however you want to think. In your heart center, Om Vajra Sakha, Vajra Yogini, Om Om. Or you can say Om Vajra Sakha, Vajra Yogini, Om Om. We can take any of the five combinations of the five Buddha family. This one is mom and home with the white. If they're both blue, it's mom and home. Take your pick. Mom, Om Vajra Vini Vajra Sapa Om Ram Hri Om Bhagavati Vajrasattva Ram Hri Om Bhagavati And at the end of it, add Hum Pei. And the Hum means you're dissolving all of the visualization of you as the deity, whatever, and all beings of, as the deity into you, Hum. Then in the voidness, 
got the idea of this being other than an illusion, totally illusory, you're penetrating the hey, you're cutting the idea of a soul or self existing, separate from everybody else, everything else. That's what religions do. This is not a religion, this is a unity program. Simple. We're not going anywhere. We're going everywhere. Hey. Then the whole universe of sentient beings dissolves into you. You as a deity dissolve into the sound of the mantras, all the sound, all the sounds dissolve into the vibration of the home, infinite hearing. Yet in a five color sphere of light disappears into a tiny part of the light into space or expands to the totality of the Dharmakaya can go either way. The Dharmakaya is Bodhisattva training school. The whole universe is a training program to become mature human beings. The code word is Buddha. Buddha. How it appears is nothing. Da. Relax and void it. Simply be present. Don't add or subtract anything. Be open to the Dharmakaya, clear of judgment of any kind. And in a state of visit awareness, as it is, the nature of your awareness is voidness. The essence of the mind is emptiness. That's the present moment, right here.
when you decide to return into the world between session, then again you invent your yidam. The yidam is the deity of whatever practices you are using with the guidance of your teacher. Chenrezi, Tara, Manjushu, Vajapani, Vajasapa. There are 100 deities. With 100 female consort. 58 of them are wrathful. 42 are peaceful. And there are five Buddha families, so that makes 1,000 deity. You only need one in these practices. More is okay, but only to fulfill certain applications with the guidance of your teacher. Don't overdo it. We're not collecting, we're not Hindus. Been there, done that. Whatever is appropriate for your situation, for your particular physical situation, mental. Go easy on yourself. Now I'm going to read the prayer called the oral seal, which is the oral transmission of what Mahamudra realization brings in practice. And this was by the founder of the Shankar Kagyu lineage. He, he wrote it. His name, he was a yogi, Kimpo Naljo, and he got all of his training from Naguna and Sukha City over a period of a hundred years and took it to Tibet in three trips over the mountains into India. And he spread it starting behind Mount Ephesus in the Shang Valleys and other areas in Tibet. And this oral seal is this idea of how to be. May the Buddhas, lords of the Dharma, who possess the mind of the three kayas, Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya vehicles, and the 10 wisdoms of the Bodhisattva training, and all the gurus and yidams, dakinis, dharma protectors, and all others in support. May they all witness with kindness the dedication of this merit, of the virtue of these practices. So in this and other lives, by all my meritorious deeds of body, speech, and mind, only be the, for the sake of benefiting all living beings, May all the emotional defilements become transformed into occasions for spiritual practice. That's what the Dharma does. May all appearances arising before my mind come under my control. For my own sake, may I attain the Dharmakaya, the all-pervasive nature of a Buddha. For as long as samsara is not empty, may I achieve a great wave of good deeds benefiting this, everyone in this way. May I achieve this by the means of the two form kinds, that of the teacher and that of the deity. With vast enlightened activities for all sentient beings, 
having trained each one according to his or her own needs and abilities. May those beings to be trained live in appropriate time for spiritual development and for the practice of introspection. May I be respected by all. May I fulfill all the hopes and wishes of others. As long as I have not manifested enlightenment, may all harm from disease, evil spirits, harmful forces, nasty humans, wild animals, demonic spirits, and the four elements become completely pacified. May my lifespan and merit increase appropriately. May my glory and wealth become vast in support of the Dharma. Then my renown equal the sky as the Lama. May all my activities of body, speech, and mind become beneficial and appropriate for the training of sentient beings. And may this ocean of samsara quickly empty. May I attain perfect enlightenment right now, today. Snap, snap, snap. So these are dedication prayers left to us by Kala Rinpoche and passed on in printing by my teacher, Long Rinchen, who passed away a few months ago. He's now sitting on my right shoulder. Dewa di nirdu da, jagya chapo dru girne, kowa chengbe malo pang, jayi sawa go parsho, sanjay kusa denpai jem la dong, choni negra denpai jem la, hindu miche denpai jem la ki, jitar go ma ho ma dru parsho. By this virtue of having realized, Ma Mujer may quickly establish every being without a single exception left out in that state. By the blessings of the three bodies of the Buddha being accomplished, by the blessing of the truth of this Dharma being unchanging, and by the wishing, blessing of the wishes of the Sangha, that's us. Being unwavering, may this and all dedication prayers be fulfilled. May all the Lamas have long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity, and all their wishes be fulfilled. May all beings be happy, free of suffering, established in bliss and equanimity, free of attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, stupidity, bewilderment, ignorance, hope, and fear. Duchi Che, thank you very much. And aloha and tashi delay.